start then with the jobs report and how the market is set up to receive this jobs report, uh, given the tensions we saw at the beginning of August and uh, our memories go back there perhaps. Yeah, good morning, Anna. Absolutely. So uh, the market is um, looking as pretty was describing for a number that's better than uh, last month's uh, pretty dismal numbers. But the risk uh, that the market is pricing in is all skewed to the downside, to a lower number, to a weaker dollar as a result. You can see that in uh, the FX markets in the options space, for example, where there's uh, elevated levels of overnight volatility being priced in and the skew very negative for the dollar. So people are expecting that if there is a surprise, most likely it will be to the downside. It will push down those shorter dated uh, yields on U.S. Treasuries and it will drag down the dollar against all of its major counterparts from the euro and the pound in your region to, to the Asian currencies as well over here. How much lower can it get, Paul, and, and, and to whose benefit? And the reason I say that is because as we speak, I'm looking at my screen here, you're seeing already a three to four basis point move in the front end of the Treasury curve. Uh, the payrolls number hasn't even hit yet. U.S. traders aren't even awake yet, not to mention dollar weakness. And I'm curious what the, the other side of that trade is. If we're talking about dollar weakness, those yields pushing lower, what currency benefits? Yeah, well, I don't know if you would call it a benefit necessarily, Critty, but uh, the balance of risk there is uh, is particularly on dollar yen. Uh, you know, we have some commentary out there from UBS today saying if the U unemployment rate gets up to 4.4 percent, then dollar yen could be in deep trouble, meaning it could push beyond those levels that we saw when we had all the market turbulence uh, this time last month. Uh, continuing further strength for the yen. That in turn is not good news for global markets given that a lot of um, the carry trades that we saw were laid on the premise that the yen was going to be weak and stay weak. Uh, it's also not good news for Japanese equities because a stronger yen would uh, destroy some of the earnings power from exporters. So that's really one of the areas of focus across the FX market. Uh, and then, you know, like you said, uh, uh, people looking at the, the short term interest rates and where that could go and how much further that could go. The benefit there being, of course, if you're a bondholder and you're looking for uh, some some uh, appreciation in the price of the, of the bonds that you're holding. I think for the stocks market, jury's out a little bit, but too much bad data like we've been seeing uh, this week, and the market starts to think, uh-oh, headed for a recession. And again, that can be a negative there too. Okay, so a little bit of bad can be good news for stocks, but really bad can be bad news for stocks. So we'll, uh, we'll park that one and see where we, where we end up. And um, that's a look at some of the data points. We're data dependent, aren't we, Paul? So do we listen to the Fed commentary still? I'm sure we do. What stood out for you? I think, I think really interesting. So we heard from Mary Daly uh, overnight pretty much repeating the Powell view uh, that he gave us in Jackson Hole that um, uh, the, the time to start cutting is soon uh, and that the Fed does not want to see any more deterioration in the labor market. So that does put the focus on the jobs. But also we're here, seeing the Fed policymakers start to talk a little bit more about the pace of cuts from here, about a continuing scale of cuts. And that's putting people's minds back onto what the terminal rate looks like and how low we could get over time. You know, is 3% where we we end up or could we really get all the way back down to where we were uh, during the most of the last decade with yields much lower that's what people are paying attention to at the long end of the yield curve